So a few people have asked me about water injection. Why on earth would you want to be spraying water into your engine? Well, there are benefits. A lot of people make more power. This video is just a look at water injection, how it works. We're also going to discuss adding other substances like methanol to the water and what this does to your engine power. There's a, a number of pros and cons that we need to be aware of. It does seem to be gaining popularity. When I go around car shows, I see more and more cars equipped with some kind of water injection system. So water injection, when you've got water inside the engine, the power is increased. So it sounds crazy. Why on earth would water increase the power in the engine? It's not a new technology. It was originally used in the war with German fighter planes utilizing water injection. And in a plane, the more power you made, the faster you went, the higher you could actually fly. And that could give you the advantage. So this technology has evolved and found its way into the humble motor car. So the higher the compression inside the engine, the more at risk you are from ignition problems. So fuel will spontaneously ignite when it is under extreme amounts of pressure. And the idea really is to control the rate and the start time at which that fuel is starting to burn. So your conventional car, when it detects a problem inside the engine as far as the combustion goes, it tends to back off a little bit on the timing. It maybe even starts to use less fuel. But overall, that would be to the detriment of your power. So the more efficient you can make the engine, Engine, the better it can manage the timing of the spark and the ignition, the more power you can make. So first off, let's just think about how the water would get into the engine. Well, there's two types of fuel system in a car. There's direct injection where the fuel is injected directly into the cylinder. And there's port injection where the fuel is injected into the airstream going through the port into the engine. So by far and away, the easiest way of setting up a water injection system is the port method. You're dealing with much lower pressures and the stream of air will effectively carry the mist of water into the engine where it can work its magic. I should point out that getting the dose correct is vital. Water doesn't compress. If you've got too much water inside the engine, you're going to start having catastrophic problems as the pistons try to compress too much water and fluid in there. So this mist of water, whether it's directly injected into the engine or it goes through the port, evaporates very quickly inside the engine. That phenomena really is why we are making more power. It's reducing the temperature inside the engine. So the fuel is less likely to detonate early. So your engine is cooled. It's got a very complex cooling system on some of these modern engines, but getting this water jet or getting this mist of water inside the engine into the combustion chamber can directly affect the temperatures inside and make for a much more efficient combustion process. With a sophisticated control system, the rate and the flow of the water can be adjusted to suit the engine's characteristics, whether it's under load, whether you're accelerating or whether you're just cruising along. So at certain points of the engine, you may not need any water injection at all, but at other point, you really want to maximize the water injection supply to get the overall benefit of this cooling effect. So as the air inside the engine cools, it also increases the density of oxygen. It takes up less space. You can get more air in there. And effectively, you're raising the octane of the fuel. So you're not actually raising the octane of the fuel, but the end effect would be the same as if you used a very high octane fuel. It would be very resistant to this premature ignition or detonation. Power gains by some people have been quoted as being as high as 40%. They were specifically thinking of a turbocharged engine, which is very different from your average naturally aspirated engine. But most people won't see power gains anywhere near that when they fit a water injection system. But it can often help to get around problems that have happened after you've tuned an engine. So the manufacturers set the engine up, the compression ratios, the fuel delivery to that factory spec. And when you start tuning your car, you often go beyond that. And this is the region where you start getting problems. And water injection can actually help mitigate those problems and just give you a little more headroom so that you can maximize the amount of power you extract from your engine. You'll notice overall that engine life is generally longer when you've got water injection. 
the emissions levels are also slightly lower on most water injection setups and you get more power. So there are three very good pros or advantages. So what about the downsides of water injection? If it's not set up correctly, you can reduce the power output of the engine. So you really do need a fairly sophisticated engine management system or just someone who knows what they're doing, who can set it up to extract the optimum amount of power from the engine. So there's certainly an amount of complexity with your water injection setup. Also in most areas, water injection is not road legal. Mods like that need to have approval to be used on the roads. And in most areas, the water injection systems just do not have that type of approval. So for a lot of people, this is an off-road or a competition or motorsport mod. The other downside is you now have something else to top up. You need to check the levels of water in the water reservoir because running low can cause other problems in the engine if it's been specifically set up to use that water injection system. So can you use tap water? Well, technically you can use any water, but tap water and other waters often have lots of minerals. And these mineral deposits can be build up inside the engine. They can cause all sorts of other problems. They can even eventually clog catalysts or diesel particulate filters. So you really want water that has been purified. So distilled water is not going to carry the same amount of mineral deposits and it's not going to cause the same problems inside the engine. But people often go a little further than just injecting water. So what would happen if you added a flammable substance to the water like methanol, which people often do? Well, most people run a mix of about 70% water at 30% methanol. There are obviously different requirements depending on the power output of your car, how it has been set up. So methanol is quite different to your conventional gasoline or petrol fuel. It burns differently. It has a higher octane rating. It resists burning. So you can use a lot more of it relative to the gasoline or the petrol before you start getting detonation. So it's a good way of increasing power. You can burn more fuel if you use something like methanol. And if that's combined with the water injection system, you're again resisting detonation or not, effectively increasing the octane of the fuel or having the overall effect of running a higher octane fuel. So people often mix methanol and ethanol with water. So in the case of methanol, you typically talk about a 70-30% ratio with 30% being methanol. With ethanol, it's often a 50-50 ratio. But both of those substances are quite flammable in their own right, but they require a lot more fuel to make the same amount of power as gasoline or petrol. But the nice thing is you can get away with using a lot more of it. It's more resistant to not. So combining that with the benefits of the water injection, you can run very high power levels just by altering the setup if you've got a water injection system and just mixing something else with the water. But you really do need to know what you're doing and you need your engine to be set up to use these alternative fuels. But we've seen some very impressive power outputs on methanol water or ethanol water mixes. But you do now have a tank that you need to monitor and top up regularly because running short can cause catastrophic problems when the engine is expecting a certain fuel delivery mix. So it's relatively complex. There are some fairly simple kits out there. So you can get away with these simple kits if you're not squirting that much water into the engine. And the engine itself is going to adjust, trim itself to cope with whatever's going on. Even with a fairly simple setup, you should see a little bit of a bump in power. Let me know what your thoughts are on water injection. If you've got it set up on your car, I'd particularly like to know what engine that is, what the effect was in terms of your power output at the end of it. So thanks for watching. Please boot the like button. That really does help us to get out there. I've lined this video up for you. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because we'd love you to stay tuned. Thanks for watching.